So one of my subs today asked me if I could talk about concave earth theory as opposed to flat earth, likely as opposed to round earth or sphere earth or globe earth. So I'm going to do a thought experiment. Hi, there goes my mouse. I'm going to do a thought experiment on concave earth. I've talked about flat earth and the sort of holes in that model, mentally speaking. I suppose I could reiterate those thoughts briefly before I attempt to look at what concave earth might look like. Um, So the only way I've ever seen these earth arguments, including the one that was supposedly accepted as the real one from the get-go, i.e. ball earth or sphere earth, along with correct rotation and uh, ellipses happening with all of the other planetary bodies, aside from that one, um, just sort of not working when you consider the mental gymnastics required to hold it up. When the logic that fails in sort of proving, and again, I've talked about the idea of the word proof and how that's also a, a sort of a, a, a failure or it's proof is just a non-entity. It always unravels back to words being ridiculous, but for the sake of argument, um, the reason that globe earth or sphere earth wasn't really working in terms of proving is that it's a, it's a perspective thing. And I don't mean perspective as in, oh yeah, well, I think it's round or I think it's, you know, exactly so many miles across, so many uh, miles in diameter, or science says it's exactly this many miles in diameter, and, you know, when you go out in space, and so on and so forth. Aside from that, it's just the fact, when you look with your own eyeballs, you see a small footprint, your visible sort of footprint is not very big. It's like one to 20 miles, maybe, like the mountains over there. Okay, it's maybe more than 20 miles. Maybe it's, maybe it's one to 50. Maybe on a good day, if you're up really high, you can see 100 miles. But it's not very, very big, and eventually the atmosphere restricts your vision and whatever shit is up in the atmosphere. So in order for you to believe for one second in what has been termed as globe earth you take what you see with your eyeballs and then you you overlay that with your imagination which sees like a zoomed out version of ball earth and then some uh, colorful diagrams of the moon revolving around the earth and then the earth and moon combo revolving around the sun and so on and so forth and then everything's revolving around each other somehow perfectly uh, and we sort of take it on faith because our imagination can very easily fill in the blanks or fill in the gaps for that model. But unless you yourself have been up, 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 and you yourself with your own eyeballs are looking down, down, down onto globe Earth, and you see it's a sphere, and you see it's rotating, and then you look up and out, or left and right and down and all the directions are going to be turned upside down because apparently there's no gravity up and out, uh, then you'd be in a position of a Neil Armstrong or a Buzz Aldrin or whoever these guys are that went up there or supposedly went up there. And, uh, but even they didn't, you know, they didn't articulate logically what they were saying. They were just, uh, spinning out the narrative. And that was way back in the day before the sort of techniques became perfected. 
so that's my general argument of the sort of absurdity of arguing one way or another. It's like you're in a very small section of what is called the reality and to you, when you just look out, it's not flat and it's not round and it's not concave and it's not uh, toroidal. It's not an oblate spheroid. It's not anything. It's a variated landscape that extends out in all directions. And there are hills and there are valleys and there are trees and there's water and there's movement and interaction with all of the elements. And that's what you see and know. And then your mental mind populates the rest of the universe. You don't actually see it. Even on a clear night, if you're outside of the smog of the city, you see specks of light up in the sky. You are not seeing perspective. You are not seeing which speck is in relation to which other speck. You're not seeing any of that. You're seeing specks of light, some slightly brighter, some slightly smaller, or some slightly uh, dimmer, and then some of them look bigger and some of them look smaller, some look closer, some look a little bit further away, but you're only seeing that based on, uh, you're not seeing it in the true depth as in we would see the landscape going by. And again, depth is just a matter of something appearing big or small in your vision. It's not, it's arguable whether what we see out there is really so-called so -called far away or whether it's sitting directly on our eyeball and then there's some manner of touch that happens when it's like big in our eyeball, you know, when something is like this big on your eyeball, uh, you could say it's close up, but you could also argue that the car that's supposedly a mile away is directly sitting on your eyeball. You could argue that. There's, I mean, any argument can be made tenable if you're imaginative enough. So that's, that's a reiteration of my general feeling about proof one way or the other, or even logical explanation or logical sort of exploration into the, the, the world models that are out there. And if I were to, okay, so let's go into concave earth. What is concave earth? I looked, I did one Google search so I could get a good image of kind of what the, the people out there are, are feeling when they think of this. And the one that came up that the one that came up first was the one that has your same earth but it's just flipped inside out so so all of your continents and your, your oceans and the land masses and everything is simply on the inside of a, a spherical globe type thing so it, the globe is still there it's like if you had a balloon and then you painted all of the, the continents and the oceans on the inside of the balloon and now when you look up, you're looking to the core of the balloon. That's, that's what I got out of it. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's, that's uh, Seven Bomar's theory of, uh, you know, the bubble theory, that there is, the universe itself is composed of some viscous liquid, some sort of liquid inside of which are floating bubbles of whatever. It's just a mental model. And inside of the bubbles, on the inside of them, are continents and land masses and so on. And the up to them is looking toward the center of the sphere. And what you would normally have considered down is technically your bridge to the outside of the bubble into the, the liquid. So that requires a bit of mental gymnastics to even comprehend what that would feel like. Uh, and just thinking about it, that one makes more sense to me than the other one. Not because of Seven. I, I respect Seven and his work, and he, he seems very uh, uh, sincere in, in what he's doing, so I'm down with what he's saying. And he also says he, you know, he got out. He became incredibly tiny and slipped through whatever barrier that we have here. Uh, to go experience, you know, whatever the liquid is that's, that is so-called outer space, according to that model. Uh, and it would also make sense according to the general rule of the matrix, which we're in, according to my opinion, uh, which says, like Matt says, you know, if the matrix tells you something, then you flip it upside down or, or reverse it or make it opposite, and then you have some 
approximation of the truth because the matrix will just feed you lies so, it, so you can stay there and feed it and so on. So the idea that we take what they said, you know, you're on a globe, you're on the outside of the globe, the globe is spinning around, just reverse it completely. It's, it's, it's still a, it's like a bubble, it's like an inside out globe and you're on the inside of the bubble looking toward the, the core of the bubble when you think you're looking up. And then uh, your own bubble is moving in and out of the realm and perhaps bumping up against other bubbles and maybe that would explain, excuse me, for when, uh, you know, earthquakes happen or, or sort of people have these, these internal awakenings or dark nights of the soul or just rumblings or just feeling like weird, feeling weird for whatever reason because we are connected with the whole thing uh, at, at our core, our core root level. And also, just to go along with the mental model of everyone seems to be in their own little universe inside their own head, uh, and we all have subjective universes, and we're, we are living in our own bubbles. Our, we have a fully formulated universe inside of our heads, each and every one of us, and we make the motions of this external universe based on what we have in our heads or our memories and our future projections. So we flip inside out that internal model and then the, when we flip those inside out and we externalize it, it joins up with our co-creators and it makes what we see out here. So the bubble model, if the physical were to to sort of mimic the subjective knowledge that everyone has their own unique universe, which when flipped inside out, co-creates our so-called external, uh, it, it makes a decent amount of sense. Some brief thoughts, I hope you all enjoyed that and I hope everybody's doing well, take care and peace.